Welcome to this tutorial on creating promotion banners for websites in Serif Photo Plus X8. Uh, we are making a promotional banner today for our client Super Splash, who run a swimming and water games activity centre. They are family friendly, they have a target audience of parents of children aged between 2 and 16, and they want a banner image on their website that's going to promote a free swimming lesson offer uh, for under threes that takes place each Tuesday at 9 a.m. So uh, before we delve straight into designing this, let's just think about what a website promo banner is. Um, the highlighted area on the right shows one in place on the Debenhams website. Um, and you'll see that it, it's right there on the home page. Um, and they're used to draw attention to the content that the website owner wishes to promote. Uh, for example, it could be popular content across the website, it might be a special offer, uh, or it could be sort of hot products and things like that. Um, if this were actually the Debenhams website were displaying in a browser or on, let's say, an iPad or a tablet, uh, then actually pretty much all you'd see is the logo, the navigation, and that main banner image, and then you'd have to scroll for everything else. So it really is a high impact uh, presentation uh, for the visitor. Um, now it might be that the promo banner becomes part of a sliding image carousel, in which case you might have three or four images sliding along in this area, which means that each one will only be shown for a few seconds at a time. So it's really important that the, that the image is well designed so that the key message gets across very quickly um, and uh, you know that, that people can take away what they need. So we don't want it overly cluttered and we don't want it overly informative. It should be picture-led with minimal text uh, so that people can be drawn to it. It looks engaging uh, and also it gives them the key information that they need. And there should be some sort of clear call to action. What we mean by that is, um, the, the, the way that you design this banner image should encourage the user or the visitor to do something, to act. In the Debenhams example, we've got links straight on that image to gifts, games, toys, gadgets and novelty gifts. And personally, I think that they could actually be a bit, a bit larger and a bit stronger. But they're there for users to act upon. So in the case of Super Splash, who want to have a... Um, who want to promote their free swimming lessons, they might benefit from having some sort of book now button, uh, which is really visible, really contrasts with the background, really stands out uh, and encourages the visitor to click and to act. So let's think specifically about what we could give to our client. And the first step really is sketching a design. There is no point getting stuck into Photo Plus if you don't know what it is you're ultimately going on to make, because you will spend forever tweaking things, cropping things, finding images from the web, um, but you won't know if they're the right ones and you'll go unguided. So the first step in all of this should be to just sketch something out on paper, think about the words, think about the key messaging and think about the key uh, assets or graphics or visual elements that you're going to want in your banner image. So here, um, starting sort of uh, top left, uh, in my sketch, uh, we've got large text for the main point, which is free swimming lessons for under threes. Uh, we want this to stand out and be easy to read quickly. Then uh, moving just underneath that, we've got key information set out with minimal text. So rather than saying every Tuesday between 9 and 10 or whatever at the Super Splash place, we've just laid out Tuesdays, 10 a.m. and then the location. And toyed with the idea of maybe using some icons as well uh, to help communicate meaning. Then if we move across uh, to top left, uh, top right, sorry, uh, you'll see that um, it says we're using a baby in the image um, or, or a toddler. Uh, that immediately tells the visitor the relevant age range. So if you have a child that is, looks like the child in the image, you're going to be instantly attracted to it. If you don't have a child that looks like the one in the image, well then this offer is not relevant to you. So it's important to have something that immediately grabs the attention, uh, faces, babies, anything looking at you will always grab your attention. We are hardwired psychologically to look at eyes when they're staring at us, things like that. Um, 
So uh, faces and people is always going to attract our attention, but even more so if, if we're talking about something that's being age targeted for a particular audience of a particular age, then get people that look like that target audience. And that way you will really easily communicate to your audience that, hey, this is something for you. And right in the bottom right, we've got a book now button. You can't really see it that easily in my sketch, um, but there's a book now button which appeals to visitors to act, gets them doing something um, in what once they're sort of at the site, gets them acting once they've taken this information in. So that's our sketch. Uh, this is where we started point, and, and through this tutorial, I'm going to show you the techniques you need to put together in order to make something, uh, to make some sort of suitable banner image for a website. Um, and the next slide uh, shows us what that might look like. So here is a, an implementation of that. You can see we've clearly got the free swimming lessons messaging for under threes. It clearly states the time uh, when it takes place. We've got a big book now button. Uh, so that contrasts nicely with the swimming pool background. Um, and we've got this baby image that, that shows us, you know, hey, this is, this is the sort of age group that we're looking at. Um, it's not exactly like our original sketch, but you can see that each of the elements are there. Um, and that's fine. Sometimes when you go to turn your, your sketch into the real product, you'll think, mm, it's not quite, it's not, I, I can't quite get the image that looks exactly like my sketch. That's fine. Get something that's equivalent. Abandon your original ideas. Hold your ideas lightly. Use them to guide you, but don't use them to constrain you. Uh, this is an absolutely fine implementation of that sketch. And this is what we're going to be going on to make it. We're going to be looking at using text, layers, um, transparency, shadows, cutting out one picture and placing onto another, blurs. There's all sorts of interesting and uh, useful skills that you're going to be learning through this series of tutorials. Um, before we get cracking with it, I just want to raise up uh, one important issue, and that is that when you're using artwork sourced from the internet, like we will be doing in this tutorial, it's absolutely essential that you have got the permission to use it. Okay, contrary to popular opinion and belief, most images online are subject to copyright. They belong to uh, a publishing body or an artist or a photographer, and you do not have the right to download and use them, particularly for commercial purposes. Um, however, there is this thing called Creative Commons, which is a licensing framework, and artists and publishers use this uh, to make their work available for other people to use within their own projects, and they very clearly state whether that can be for non-profit, whether it can be for um, commercial use, which would be the case in this example, because uh, uh, Super Splash is a company. They uh, tell you whether you have to use their original artwork in its entirety or whether you can cut bits out and reuse it. Uh, and they also make clear whether you need to um, give attribution, that means uh, a recognition of the name of the person who came up with the artwork in the first place. Um, to help us find Creative Commons assets, and there's pictures, clip arts, music, videos, there's all sorts of digital assets that we, can, uh, that, we, that we can find that are Creative Commons. In order to find them, there is a Creative Commons search engine, and that's a great place to start looking for this high-quality, copyright-free digital asset library that's out there on the web. So that's what we're going to be using as we go through our tutorials. Okay, well, that's the introduction to our little project. Um, this is a reminder, again, of what it is we're going to be producing. Uh, so what we'll do now is move on to the next video where I show you how to get started with this, how to find our digital assets, um, and then we will progress through the series showing you each of the different steps that you need to produce a banner image like this one.